Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Thank you for inviting me to participate in your training today. Um, I am sorry that I wasn't able to come in person. One of these days, we'll work it out so that I can come back and visit Green Bay and see all of you. Um, what I'm going to do today is run you through some very quick highlights of Wisconsin Teamster history, little gems here and there uh, that give you a little bit of an idea what uh, your uh, predecessors were doing over the years um, in the various locals in the state. So uh, with that, let's start with the very beginning. Next. Uh, the beginning is team drivers, both black and white, and even some women uh, team drivers, after the Civil War, recognized they're not being treated well. So they band together to start to have a stronger voice and begin to create independent local unions. Uh, the very first local union that, that they created was uh, Teamsters Union Number no. 1, which was in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And the next one was, you guessed it, in Wisconsin. It was a brewery Teamsters local in Milwaukee, and that was created in 1888. Now, once the Milwaukee um, group is in place, they start popping up all over the place. So much so that by 1898, we have created a national union. That national union was called the Team Drivers International Union. Um, a second local split off from that in 1902 called the Teamsters National Union. But in 1903, those two amalgamated uh, uh, together and created the International Brotherhood of Teamsters as we know it today. Um, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a view of uh, what Wisconsin looked like in those early days. In 1903, when the union was created, there were five locals throughout Wisconsin. And that, uh, a lot of states didn't have any. So that was, five was a good number. Uh, by 1906, you've increased to eight locals and uh, stays that at uh, 1912. 1916, you're really expanding in Wisconsin. There are now 11 separate uh, Teamster locals throughout the state. Uh, but unfortunately, in 1928, we've dropped back down. And as we were getting closer, the tumult of the uh, Depression coming and whatnot, um, some locals were uh, dissolving. The other thing that often happened in the early days was a group of people would get together, form a small local, and then would um, join with a larger group and their local would then dissolve. So you see that a lot up and down growth uh, with locals uh, throughout the country. I did want to put one thing up there so you could see. In 1912, um, we actually, in the roster, it is listed that we have locals in Indian Territory. And you'll see uh, those listed there. That was Oklahoma and the surrounding area. Next. Thought you might like to see one of the early Teamster uh, businesses in Green Bay. Uh, this was Frank Schilling's Food Company. And what was happening about this time as we're organizing, as we're expanding as this new local, private businesses like this um, are deciding to use Teamster members to deliver their goods rather than try to do all the delivery themselves. So this, uh, this Wisconsin uh, businessman is one of those uh, pioneers in using the Teamsters. Uh, I thought you might like to see typical load. Uh, 1903, they're loaded up on the horse and wagon. By 1910, of course, uh, we have some motor uh, trucks, and you can see uh, that's a pretty a big load there. 
uh, gives you a glimpse as to why unions were so important that we came in to try and straighten out some of those safety issues for the workers. And some of those early companies that we were working with, Wells Fargo was one, uh, not always a bank. Uh, they actually uh, delivered stuff. American Express uh, wasn't always a credit card. They also delivered stuff. And UPS, uh, of course, uh, we partnered with starting in 1916 and still with them at this point. Um, also, here you can see uh, Teamsters like progress. We're very big on uh, investing in the motor trucks. And here, uh, Teamsters, five Teamsters are doing the first Continental delivery in 1912. But Teamsters also missed their partners, which was their horse. And so many of the old team drivers uh, started uh, naming their motor trucks. And this one uh, was from Green Bay, uh, and he has named his truck Betsy. Okay, so now we're at World War I, and uh, the Wisconsin Teamsters are participating in the things that is going on throughout the Union. Uh, first of all, Teamsters taught soldiers how to drive. Uh, Blackjack Pershing, who is the head of the uh, U.S. Army, comes to Dan Tobin, who is president of the Union, and asks him for his members to teach soldiers how to drive. So we do, overseas and here in the United States. Women Teamsters are asked by the U.S. government, and there was a number in Wisconsin, to deliver medicine to the rural areas and also uh, take doctors out into the rural areas. Uh, the women did this and they uh, received commendations from the government, uh, but you don't hear about it very much. Uh, the other thing that Teamsters did during that Spanish flu, and that's uh, the women are wearing masks there because of that, um, the other thing that Teamsters did were uh, to provide street cleaning services and sprinkler services. Uh, you wouldn't think it was that important, but during the Spanish flu epidemic, keeping dust down on the roads was very, very important. And there were a number of Teamster locals that were sprinkler locals uh, that would go and uh, keep those roads wet so that, uh, that uh, dirt was kept down. Uh, Teamster women also helped keep the spirits up, and uh, this uh, happened a lot in Wisconsin uh, with uh, the number of breweries that we had. Women were allowed to deliver everything except beer. It was immoral for women to deliver beer until Dan Tobin explained he didn't have a lot of drivers, so if women weren't going to deliver beer, there would be no beer delivery. Suddenly, it's okay for women to deliver beer, and that's what the woman there is doing. Um, also, uh, it, the picture's not here, but the first four-wheel drive uh, vehicle uh, that was created and used in the war effort was actually uh, developed, created, and built in Appleton, Wisconsin. Nice. Um, after we get through the war, uh, we've had time of expansion in the 1920s, um, and then we get to the 30s. The Depression hits, and for a lot of unions, that is a very tough time. For the Teamsters, because we had foresight in terms of our finances, we're able to get through uh, pretty well. In fact, we uh, charter more locals during the 1930s than we do at any other time. Also, we're moving into some new areas. Food processing and cannery uh, become uh, new areas that we move into. Dairy, we already had, but this uh, takes a big leap forward in the 1930s as well. And those are particularly important crafts 
in Wisconsin. All of uh, the food processing and cannery becomes a big issue uh, in Wisconsin. Next. Uh, here, I wanted to show you that in the 30s, uh, local uh, 75, uh, which uh, merged with 662 here uh, just a few years ago, uh, was formed in 1933, and you can see uh, there where it is uh, in, listed in the roster. Below, you will see what I call the lineage page, and it will show where that number local was before it became uh, the Green Bay local. And actually, it was only in one place uh, before it was uh, part of the Wisconsin local system. The following year, Local 662 is chartered, uh, and again, you can see it on the roster page, and its lineage page is up at the top. So that gives you a little idea about uh, what was going on with those two locals. Next. Uh, joint councils. Joint councils had an interesting history in Wisconsin. The very first uh, joint council in Wisconsin is a local that's both Minnesota and Wisconsin. It's Duluth and Superior, Wisconsin. Uh, that was Joint Council um, 48. Uh, then in 1938, two joint councils are formed in Wisconsin. Uh, one is Wausau, Warsaw, and Wausau, I never say that right, and Eau Claire in 1938. Uh, and also in 1938, Joint Council 60 is created in Appleton and uh, the surrounding areas. Um, over on the right-hand side for you, you can see the roster there in 1954 is listing uh, both Joint Council 60, 63, by this time 48 has uh, gone by the wayside, uh, but Local 50 is in uh, Milwaukee. Um, but just the following year, those are all gone, and there's only one Joint Council in Wisconsin, and that is Joint Council 39 in 1955. Uh, all, the lo all the Joint Councils are amalgamated into one, and that's the Joint Council that you still have today. Next. Um, just a few little things that were going on during the Depression uh, that Wisconsin was spearheading. In 1932, uh, some laws are passed providing national aid for unemployed workers as the depression is uh, starting to grow and become pretty severe. Uh, Wisconsin had been one of the very few states that already had something in place for unemployed workers. So the national model takes its points from Wisconsin. Um, also, uh, Wisconsin Teamsters uh, take the lead in the dairy craft. As that craft is expanding, it's modernizing, uh, it's moving forth across the country in terms of unionized members and uh, the Milwaukee Teamsters uh, and other Teamsters in Wisconsin are taking uh, uh, the lead on that. Uh, Wisconsin Teamsters also, nobody wanted to speak out about this, uh, but Wisconsin Teamsters accuse companies of giving bribes and arming strike breakers. Everybody knew that it was going on, but nobody wanted to say it out loud until uh, the Wisconsin Teamsters were willing to do that. Next. Wisconsin takes the lead, as I said, in dairy, but one of the things that was going on uh, in dairy and in cannery was there were very loose regulations for how the food or milk was processed, how it was sold, and so forth. And in the 1930s, uh, canned goods, and in particular, going with this picture here, uh, milk was not regulated. And four, five, and six-day-old milk could be sold. It was called stale milk, and it was generally sold to schools and to hospitals. Teamsters thought that was really gross, 
And so starting in Wisconsin, they began dumping gallons and gallons, thousands of gallons of milk. Uh, and it spread all across the country um, and led to changes in legislation regarding the sale of milk. We did the same uh, with canned food later in the 40s. Uh, World War II, again, uh, the Teamsters, just like World War I, are very, very involved. Uh, we sell bonds. You can see the top picture. Uh, the truck is advertising to buy it. victory bonds. Uh, women are essential workers and take over a lot of the jobs uh, that men had had before the war. Teamsters become civil defense wardens all across the country, and Teamsters uh, are involved overseas. We build and run uh, the Red Ball Express in Europe, uh, the Burma Road in the Pacific Theater, and we also build the Alaska Highway. Um, and all of those events involved uh, Teamsters from Wisconsin. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Wisconsin uh, takes it a little step further. The Wisconsin uh, newsletter or journal uh, calls for stepping up in the war effort. You see uh, on the left-hand side there, uh, the Wisconsin Teamster, the editor, uh, calls for all kinds of home support and to uh, do whatever you can uh, to support the war. Um, down below that, you see the Wisconsin Teamsters say, stick your neck out. Uh, what they're commenting on is saying they want people who are willing to stick their neck out, willing to do what's right. Wisconsin's ready to do that, and they call on the rest of the country to do the same. They're saying they want those kind of people in government, and we want them in the labor movement. So they were very open about what they were looking for. Um, the top right-hand side, you see uh, Wisconsin Bakers. In 1942, there was a call for no strikes for the duration while we're in the war. Uh, the Bakers down in uh, Milwaukee had already been angling for and got permission for a strike, uh, but they were held accountable uh, for that and said they broke the strike rule, so the, the International uh, supports uh, those Wisconsin bakers while they are not allowed to work until the case is settled. And whoop, down at the bottom, um, in the Teamster magazines, um, they kept a very close record all through uh, the war about who was killed, who was injured, who was missing in action. And this is early on in the war. And unfortunately, today we probably wouldn't like that headline. Uh, but uh, it was wartime. And this is talking about a, uh, a Wisconsin member from Local 43 uh, who died in a Japanese prison camp. Um, so like I said, the magazine kept tabs on all of the members who were serving. Next. Um, also, as we're getting into the war now, I talked about the editor of the Wisconsin newspaper. On the right-hand side, uh, you will see a picture of that very editor. And he is talking again more strongly about the home front, what we can do. He also is telling truck drivers to be proud. You are an essential worker. We need you. He calls on Wisconsin in particular to do your part, and he says, I'm going to do mine. And at the end of this article, he says he's going down to enlist in the Army, and he does. Um, and then he reports on uh, Wisconsin Teamsters from the war. Uh, Dan Tobin, in 1943, praises the Wisconsin Teamster Press, their newsletter and magazine that they did. Uh, they were outstanding uh, pieces of journalism, and other locals and joint councils were copying what the Wisconsin uh, Press was doing. Um, and then 
Up at the top, you see Green Bay uh, won two efficiency awards uh, during the war in 1943 for two of their plants. One was a craft food plant and one was a shelford plant. But the workers there did so well in terms of gearing up for the war effort that they were given these national commendations. Now, after the war is over, we run into a lot of anti-union sentiment. Legislation begins to take hold, right to work, Taft-Hartley, uh, all saying that labor unions are bad, that their wings need to be clipped. Uh, this is when we start being accused of being communist, of being crooks. Uh, of whatever you might have. And so Teamsters all across the country, including uh, Wisconsin, uh, become very involved in fighting that anti-labor legislation. Uh, Wisconsin in particular uh, is um, busy trying to fight uh, it. And one of the things that they are able to do is create something called Have It Delivered. It begins in Wisconsin and becomes later a national campaign that's very successful uh, that runs for more than 10 years. And the whole idea is to get merchants to go back to pre-war times uh, when they actually had stuff delivered. And the slogan goes on to be Have It Delivered by a Teamster, of course. And we start organizing department stores and florists and you name it uh, so that new jobs are created for the veterans returning from war and uh, goods are be being delivered to homes uh, by Teamsters. Uh, in 1948, we have a Teamster from Local 662 helped with a suspended car he uh, managed to help in the accident scene and, and make everything safe. So he is uh, commended for his help. And here in 1946, you can see the cover of the Teamster magazine is talking about those dairy efforts in Wisconsin and throughout the country in the dairy craft. Next. Okay, 1948, a few things going on. First of all, the Teamster magazine gets a new look. It becomes larger size, like a magazine, and it's got color for the first time. Um, in Wisconsin in 1948, they were having a really good time with their contracts. They are meeting their goals and objectives for contracts all throughout the state, so much so that they are commended in the Teamster magazine for how well they are doing. And then also in 1948, I just had to put this in because it just struck me, uh, in uh, uh, Wisconsin, they put out fires using whey uh, from the cheese. Apparently it works better than water. And so they use that to put out fires. Uh, Teamsters from Local 619 are putting out fires with, with liquid cheese. <laughs> um, rodeos. Now, Teamster rodeos are a really big deal uh, at city, national, state, uh, levels. Uh, drivers, both union and non-union, compete against each other uh, using their skills in driving. And here uh, you can see in 1948, a local 75 winner is the, is the grand champ of the rodeo. Uh, in 1959, the grand champ uh, is also from Wisconsin. And in 1964, uh, we've got some of the top winners in different divisions also from Wisconsin. So y'all were good drivers. You're always winning stuff. Next. And you're also safety guys and gals. Uh, repeat winners in Kenosha uh, 
Uh, here it's showing their Local 95 um, winning safety awards in 1950, but that same local was winning awards in 1947, 48, 49, 53, you name it. They, these guys were always winning national recognition for their safe driving records. Um, and over on the other side, uh, we're talking more about that cannery expansion. After World War II, and particularly in the early 1950s, the cannery division expands exponentially, and Wisconsin is at the center of that growth. And uh, so much so that cannery becomes our second largest division by the mid-1950s. Next. Okay, 1955. One of the ways that we are battling uh, the anti-union legislation is organizing. And uh, you see here on uh, the left-hand side, there was a massive organizing effort of laundry and dry cleaning workers in southern Wisconsin. They were attempting uh, to organize 3,000 workers in uh, southern Wisconsin, and they were successful in doing so. At the same time, Wisconsin is part of the Central uh, Area Pact uh, for um, uh, freight agreements. It was the first steps in the Master Freight Agreement. The Central States Area Pact was what uh, was the model to go on and create uh, the Master Freight Agreement. And here in 1955, uh, the area agreement is raise, raising wages and benefits uh, for everyone in the central states, and a number of locals in Wisconsin are benefiting from that. Um, part of the organizing uh, drive was our slogan. It was, we are Teamster strong and true. Why don't you become a Teamster too? And that is still my favorite slogan. I think they should use it again. Next. Uh, 1956, Wisconsin Magazine does a story about the Teamster. And it's kind of a romantic look at team drivers and what they do and how they would bring goods and materials to rural areas and uh, how they were kind of a dying breed, um, but now were truck drivers uh, instead of the old Teamster. So it was just kind of an interesting look at who and, and what kind of crafts had been Teamsters in Wisconsin. And then in 1956, the Teamster magazine salutes the state of Wisconsin for all they have accomplished and the different crafts that they have in their uh, state. 1958, Wisconsin Teamster, already a good press publication, is expanding and upgrading its services, upgrading and modernizing its look, and uh, everyone is very excited about that. Uh, Local 200 down in uh, Milwaukee is doing uh, a study. They spent a lot of money doing a significant study working with the University of Wisconsin on union workers versus non-union workers. And what they come up with is that union workers are better citizens. They are better workers. Um, and uh, that uh, goes a long way to help pump up uh, union organizing. And then several uh, folks in Washington, namely uh, Hubert Humphrey was one, uh, praises Wisconsin Teamsters uh, for their integrity. And a quote that he says is, that Wisconsin Teamsters have a standard of integrity and decency which may well stand as a banner for free labor the world over. So that's a pretty nice compliment from a guy that wasn't even from your state. Uh, 1959, DRIVE is created. DRIVE is our political action arm. 
and women teamsters are really involved in that. Women from Wisconsin participate in these motorcades uh, between 1962 and 1968. 15,000 teamster women uh, go to Washington and to lobby on labor issues. And what they do is known as the Great Conversation. It was extremely popular, extremely effective. Uh, motorcade members were diverse, uh, they were very dedicated, and they often became lifelong friends. Uh, and here are some of the Wisconsin efforts. Jimmy and Joe Hoffa uh, came to Wisconsin to hold uh, meetings and one of the uh, ever popular Joe Hoffa luncheons. Uh, they originally thought they'd maybe get 500 people at these luncheons and they were turning up with two, three, and four thousand people coming to these luncheons and Wisconsin uh, was was no exception. Uh, there is a training that was done uh, as part of the Wisconsin drive, the agenda for it. Now down at the bottom you'll see a roll call um, uh, for labor uh, votes and that is just to show that is part of what DRIVE did, was make sure that people knew that their representatives were voting yay or nay on all the labor issues. Uh, they also uh, ranked state uh, senators and congressmen so people would know um, who to vote for. Next. Uh, teamsters are honored as heroes and earn the nickname Knights of the Highway. Every month in the old magazines, a teamster is being lauded for delivering a baby or saving a kid from a burning farmhouse or whatever. Um, down here at the bottom, quick thinking uh, of a local 662 member saves the day at an accident. He's able to go in and, and straighten out whatever was going on with the accident. And, and really stops it from getting worse. So, of course, he is uh, commended for that. Uh, local 257 in Milwaukee, unfortunately, a member loses his life while trying to save a young woman and her baby. Uh, she was up on a bridge. She was de despondent. He jumped over, held her, uh, helped her get back up till people could get there uh, to help him save her. And unfortunately, he lost his grip and he fell and to his death. Uh, but the woman and her baby were saved. Next. Um, Local 200 uh, develops a stewards program, a stewards school with the University of Wisconsin that becomes the gold standard for steward training. Um, local 200 does this uh, and other uh, locals and joint councils copy it. At this time, there is not a national program for training. So everything that we develop later starts out here at Local 200 in Wisconsin. Uh, and then the other thing, you know, in uh, 1955, the AFL-CIO kicked the Teamsters out, along with the carpenters, the auto workers, and the steel workers, claiming that we were rash in our organizing and that we were tinted with communism. So rather than standing up and supporting us, they tossed us out. Well, in 1961, uh, the Wisconsin AFL had had enough, and they want their Teamsters back. Uh, they're saying they miss their Teamsters, and Teamsters were leaders, and they want them back in the AFL. Next. Uh, now, as we get later into the 60s, uh, donations by uh, the Teamsters to the University of Wisconsin, uh, we give them 25 grand in 1968, which is a good chunk of cheese. Local 200, chunk of cheese, ha, huh? I'm talking to Wisconsin. Uh, local 200 uh, builds a brand new local and has a state of the art health center as part of that new building. In fact, pictures from your health center uh, are here in the international building. 
And then just for fun, I had to put a local member uh, is listed in the Teamster magazine as a wizard on the concertina. He wins the national championship uh, playing the concertina. Next. Uh, and this here, uh, local 199 member retires after 26 years. And I had to put that up there because of his quote. He said, I've always said there are two kinds of people, those that are Teamsters and those that wish they were. And I thought that would be a good place to leave us. Next, we got one more slide here. And that is, remember, history is now. Everything that goes on now becomes history that your grandchildren learn about in your state and across the country. Tradition, service, and endurance, it's not just a union, it's a way of life and has been for 120 years, not only in Wisconsin, but across the country. I hope that was fun and a little bit interesting for you. Hopefully one day we'll get to do a longer program, but I hope that adds something to your training. Have a great rest of your training and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.